Hey everyone, John from RC Departure. Thanks for joining me. Today I have a review of the new Ares QX130 quadcopter. This ready to fly quadcopter comes in at 100 bucks, everything in the box, and it's got some cool features. Six axis stabilization, so you have the three axis gyro, three axis accelerometers, a flip button on the transmitter, and it's got some nice accessories. Five different accessories of which I have four. I have a rocket launcher, a bubble maker, a water cannon, and a winch, and all those are controllable from the transmitter. Pretty cool stuff. I didn't get the camera, there's also a camera option you can get. The accessories are 13 bucks each and the camera is 30 bucks. I also picked up an extra battery for it, $8.50. 500 milliamp single cell battery. We've got the charger in the box. I'm gonna do basically a running commentary on the flying, so we're gonna tighten things up. We have a lot to cover. Let's just go ahead and get everything out of the box, take a look at it on the bench, and then we'll just start flying this quadcopter. All right, so just a slight change in plan. I actually couldn't wait to start flying this thing, so I've been flying this quadcopter a whole bunch, and this will be discussion of the quadcopter, the flying, and the accessories. So in the box, you get the 2.4 gigahertz radio, the quadcopter, single cell 500 milliamp lithium polymer battery with the wall charger. This charges at 1C and takes about an hour or so to charge, and you get about five to seven minutes of flight time. With one of the accessories on board, the flight time is slightly reduced. You get four extra rotors, and you also get an instruction manual, which I do recommend you take a look at. Lots of good information in there. The quadcopter flying wise is extremely stable, very easy to fly. When you first take off, you need to trim it out just a little bit. You might need to trim it as the battery wears down, but once you have it in hover, it's extremely stable, extremely easy. And on the low rates, very easy. On the high rates, it's still very easy to fly. It's still very stable. It doesn't get twitchy at all. And on the high rates, you can get a fair amount of speed. It gets fairly maneuverable and just a lot of fun to fly. I really like this quadcopter. It's also very quiet too. The LEDs are super bright and you can easily fly it at nighttime. The landing gear here centrally is removable. So you can pop that off if you're not using an accessory and you want to have a more aerodynamic look, just pop that right off. And then you can easily put it right back on just like that. So here is the radio, 2.4 gigahertz, four channel radio and you can actually toggle between mode two and mode one. Of course, it comes set as mode two. Throttle on the left stick, push this button up. It takes a little bit of force, but once you get it like that, now you have throttle on the right stick. It's in mode one, so we'll go ahead and set it back. Turn it on. While it's beeping is your time to arm the quadcopter. That's the time to plug in the battery. You have about five seconds to do it. You want to make sure the quadcopter is level and still so that the uh, gyros and everything arm normally. And here's the radio. You have a nice LCD screen. You have a battery charge indicator, which is nice. When you first take off, you'll be in low rate, 60%. If you punch the button, you'll be at 100% high rate. So there's 60%, there's 100%. You'll also see where the throttle is here. So if you see a different number, it's just because you have a throttle at a certain level. So that is the dual rate. Up here, you have the auto flip button. You'll get a beeping sound and then you move the cyclic wherever you want the flip to go. So that was a right flip, left flip, forward flip, back flip. You can do multiple flips. You can put it in the corner and do some weird sort of flips. And as the battery wears down, it'll take a little bit more to recover. You'll lose more altitude with the flip. When it's fresh, you recover a little bit better. So be aware of that. And of course, when you do multiple flips, it tends to drop uh, altitude. Here is the ABCD button. This is what controls uh, your accessories and the LED lights. The D button does nothing, that's uh, just uh, there. Doesn't do anything on the transmitter or on the quadcopter. B button turns the LEDs on and off. Very bright LEDs, I really like them for night flying. The A and the C button are what control the accessories. And depending on what accessory is using, you'll be using these buttons. My only complaint about this transmitter is the placement of this button arrangement because down there, for me, it's pretty awkward to get to. I have to kind of reach for it and I either have to kind of do this sort of thing because it's just not in a good position. For the bubble maker, if you want to hold it down and have a continuous release of bubbles, you got to hold the button down. So uh, for me, it's a little bit tricky to do that. I kind of wish this button was up here somewhere where it's definitely more natural. I'm a thumb flyer, but even if you're a pincher, you're going to have the same problem. So up here would have been a little bit better for that button arrangement. Other than that, the transmitter is nice. It comes with the AA batteries and it has a good feel to it, uh, especially for a ready to fly type transmitter. Quadcopter is uh, pretty durable. I've crashed it a whole bunch. It's holding up, just some scrapes and scuffs, but nothing really broken. One of the LEDs kind of started blinking. You may see that in the video, but then I crashed it again and it started working just fine. 
So you can also get a replacement uh, body canopy. It comes in blue as well. Replacement rotors, of course, the arms. So even if you do break something, things are replaceable. Let's go ahead and take the uh, body off. And we'll take a look at the uh, insides here. So on the inside, you have the board and then you have these ports up front here. And you have the video camera port, the missile launcher port, the sprayer port, which works for the water cannon and the bubble maker. And then you have the hoist port. So depending on what accessory you're using, plug those into there. So let's take a look at those accessories. We'll look at the missile launcher first. Here it is. You've got six missiles in there. It comes with six spare missiles as well. And also all the accessories come with spare landing gear. So if you buy all the accessories, you end up with a whole mess of central landing gear. So when you place this in the quadcopter, basically it has these little tabs that like that, that just slide in and you want to make sure it snaps like that. Now it's locked in and it's good. At first I wasn't snapping it in place. And a few times I had the missile launcher fall out and things like that. Uh, so I want to make sure you hear that snap uh, when you put it in. On the transmitter, the missile launcher uses the A and the C button. And what's nice is you have the A button to do single launches and you can press the C button and launch them all at once, which is kind of cool. They don't launch particularly far. Uh, but it's still kind of a cool little accessory. Probably our favorite accessory is the bubble maker uh, because it actually works. You can make some pretty cool bubbles with it, as you'll see. It comes with the bubble solution and also comes with uh, the tube to draw it up. The reservoir is not huge, so you get about you know, maybe 20 seconds or so of bubble making before it runs out. It's a little messy to fill it. It tends to like overfill and spray out and stuff, and you need a fair amount of pressure to actually fill this and to fill the water blaster reservoir. So do it over the sink because things might get a little bit messy. Here is the water cannon, the water sprayer, a little bit bigger of a reservoir. It gives you the same kind of uh, tube to draw things up. This one I'm not as impressed with. The water stream is pretty anemic. It's hard to even probably see in the video, but it does spray the water and probably sprays for a little longer, maybe 30 or 40 seconds, a real kind of light spray, uh, but it does work. Probably the most interesting accessory is the hoist because it's the most challenging for certain. You've got this basket you put together and then you have the hoist itself and you're just trying to snag it like that. Very hard to do. I did it one time just for the video, but it is difficult and I was definitely crashing it around trying to do that. Hoist goes up and down and probably you've got about, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half or so of string there. Uh, maybe a little less than that. I'm not sure, but anyway. It does work, kind of an interesting little accessory there. So that's all the accessories and a report on the flying. Let's go ahead and look at some flight video. And then after the uh, general video, we'll show some crashes and so, show some of the things that this thing went through. So you can get an idea of what it's uh, put up with and the fact that it's still working uh, is pretty nice. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoy the videos, please give a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe if you want, make some comments or questions. Always appreciate that. And let's go fly. Hard to see it, but it's spraying.
That's how you know the battery is out. Flashing lights, loss of power.